Turns out I'm rolling. Ma! The meat low! <laughs> hey, let's talk about food. So I am doing something that CJ absolutely loves today. We are doing moule frites. We are doing a steamed white wine and garlic broth mussels with some french fries, a little parmesan action. CJ is trembling behind the camera. Out of joy, euphoria, and What does the sound of glee. euphoria sound like? You don't wanna know. <laughs> I don't even know what that, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Basically, bottom line, bottom line, everyone. Today is a simple one, it's delicious, it's sure to impress your friends. Today let me show you how to make a moule frite on the Blackstone Air Fryer. Cue the music! All right, first things first, let's start with, um, let's start with french fries. Wanna do that? Yeah, do it. I have, um, we talked about this in a few videos. We mean it, we love it. Making homemade french fries is amazing, but these Idaho brand hand cut fries are really fantastic. Yeah. I, I would say, I would say they're just as good as like handmade at the home. I'm a fan. Yeah, they're good. What I'm saying. They're good. We, we're they're not sponsored good. by them. We don't have a relationship, but I'd love to be brand friends. Yeah. Hey, Idaho. Hello? <laughs> we're gonna start with our fries because these are gonna take, because you're gonna take just a minute. I've got my air fryer set to medium. Uh, I am just gonna go downtown, drill the brown, dump all those in there, give those a shake. We're looking at about seven to nine minutes, depending on how you like them. I'm a fan of well done French fries, CJ. Me too. Crispy, yep. crispy fry. Yeah, that's what I'm all about. Like that crunch. Let's talk about broth. Let's talk about mussels. Let's talk about flavor, CJ. Here's an aluminum pan. <laughs> Has nothing to do with flavor. <laughs> I've only got one burner on here. The rest are off. This is so I can control my heat. If things get too hot, I can slide. So I've got one burner on high heat. I'm gonna let that start cruising. I have a stick of butter, CJ. Mm. An entire stick of That's butter. That seems excessive, but well, I know for a fact it's not. There we go. We're gonna let that melt down. I'm gonna hit this with a bit of olive oil. Now, I see a lot of people in the comments talk about smoke points a lot. Butter has a very low smoke point. That's because of all of um, the fat, uh, the milk solids in, fat, uh, in the butter. So I'm gonna add some additional fat. I'm adding olive oil to the butter. This is going to increase my smoke point so the butter can get hotter without burning. You with me, CJ? Yep. If you do oils uh, and butters, it, the smoke point is going to be the, where um, it'll burn faster, or it won't, or you can cook it longer. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. So we take some fresh garlic. You know, I was going to actually buy the. Um, you should have. I was going to buy the kind that's like pre. Jarred. No, not jarred. Like the pre-peel. Yeah. But Blackstone Betty would. Ream, us. Out. Betty's a hand slapper. I don't yeah. know if you know that out there. Blackstone oh. Betty, she's a hand slapper. Or she did she, it to me once, it broke my heart. Or, <laughs> or maybe she got it her hand slap. We, oh, we're looking good over there. We got a few minutes. We're gonna take, I don't know, maybe four or five of these cloves of fresh garlic. Betty, uh, she mentioned something in her last video and I actually thought it was really wonderful. She talked about how her mother always smelled like fresh garlic, and there's something so beautiful about that because food, it's just as much about what you're making as it is about who you're making it for. So all these tiny little steps to just make things better, it's just kind of because you love what you're doing. And I love that about Betty. It's one of the things that actually made me fall in love with cooking. You guys have seen CJ's first cooking show. If you haven't, check it out it's on our channel. It's really fun stuff. Uh, CJ hasn't been cooking as long as we have, but I think osmosis has happened. Like you've been watching us, me, Todd, yep. Betty, for so long. It's just sunk in. Yeah. It's in your blood now. So you're like, you're in so it for I'm, a minute, buddy. I'm highly immersed. Highly Although immersed in the I food highly world. doubt you are immersed enough to make this one. Nope. <laughs> so I'm just cutting off the little nub end, just a little bit and then smashing it down with your knife. That helps us peel it pretty fast. You wanna see that one more time, CJ? Yep. So we take a clove, just like this, we have the peel on. Now it has this little nub at the end. We're gonna just slice it kind of halfway through, like that. 
put your knife down flat, give it a smash, and it opens up the garlic so that you can peel the skin back relatively easily, just like that. So we're gonna give this just a rough chop. We wanna keep this nice and thick. We're going Blackstone Betty style right here. Which means very garlicky. Very. Large chunks. Very garlicky. All right, we're gonna take this over to our butter. So we're gonna scoop all of this up. We're gonna drop this right down over the top of our butter. Now this is gonna to start to permeate and the oils in our butter, uh, the oils in our garlic, it's gonna penetrate all that butter and oil. Super, super flavorful. Now we have one other thing. We're gonna save, uh, let's talk about parsley. Can we get nerdy for a second? Oh, by all means, nerdy. Flat leaf parsley. Sorry to the parsley growers of America. Do not use curly parsley ever in your life. Just reminds me of bad garnish from Denny's. It, you know what it reminds me of, CJ? Holiday Inn, 1996, Clearwater Beach, Florida, Christmas vacation with my family. Wow. Too specific? A little bit. That curly leaf pasta, pasta, parsley, will oh. haunt my dreams. Curly, 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 now there's a ton of flavor in the stems, which is why we're using both parts, but the leaves are far more beautiful, so we wanna keep those separate from our stems. Now I also have some fresh thyme. I wanna take a decent amount of thyme here. This is like probably half, wouldn't you say? Ain't nobody got time for that. Half? Well, I'm gonna put this on the bundle, yeah. together with my parsley, like that. And I've got one more little trick. We're gonna use this um, fresh Parmesan for our fries later, but you see this rind part? This part on the end, that's the stuff you don't want to eat. You can kind of see where the color changes, that discoloration. That's yeah. the part you kind of end up throwing away, right? Like that's the part you're done with. I shaved all my fresh Parmesan. Mm -hmm. Toss it. Don't toss it! Please don't do this because check it out. We're going to cut that entire rind off just like that. Now this is typically the piece that would end up in the garbage can but we are putting it right here Ooh. with our herbs. That's our thyme and our parsley. We're gonna tie this together to a nice little bundle, CJ. Are you tying it with thyme? It's a thyme tie. Thunder. Now this actually has a phrase, this tight little bundle. This is called a bouquet garni. This is a French technique. It basically just means a lovely satchel of aromatics. We're gonna throw this in with our butter off to the side and that is gonna flavor our broth uh, and our liquid. So we're gonna let that sit for just a bit. Let's talk about leek, shall we? Let's do it. This is a leek. If you are unfamiliar, the leek is in the onion and garlic family, and it's somewhere in between the two. If you've got the white and it gets progressively more green, we're gonna cut right where this top leaf starts, just like that. We don't need this part, we do need this part. We're gonna cut it in half, we're gonna do a nice, fine little slice on it. Now, uh, leeks are loaded with flavor. Imagine it's somewhere in between garlic and onion. So it's got the sweetness of onion, but a lot of savory flavor like garlic. So we're just cutting it in half, then doing a nice thin julienne. We're gonna add this to our butter. We're basically compounding all of these flavors into one magical broth. So we're gonna go over to our butter. So we'll grab all of this right over into that butter. Just like that. I got a little bit more here. Now we've got butter, garlic, thyme, parsley. We are just like compounding flavors. It's gonna be insane. Is it time for CJ's favorite part? Mmm, I can already smell it. Mussels. I got mussels, guys. And we want to pump you up. Okay, you wanna see a trick? Sure. All right, check this out. So I got a beautiful bag of mussels. Now if you get a mussel and he's open like that, you can give him a little squeeze, say, hey guy, wake up. And if he doesn't wake up, he doesn't close, which this one's not, that means he is dead. Is dead. So, so into the garbage he goes. Hey, can you cut that part out? Nah, dude. 
So here's what we want. We want them to be nice and tight. And if you can see right along the edge here, uh, we've got that nice tight seal. That is what you want. So if they're open, you can kind of give them a little tap and they will close like that. And that means they are fresh and good to go. Let's give our uh, french fries a shake. Okay. So using the air fryer is really nice because it's super convenient. Now when you get some fries, we're about halfway done. Can you see that? Halfway done, give them a shake. Get some more surface area into that heat. We're gonna go back in for a few more minutes. Our butter and oil is looking good. Can you see that, CJ? Dude, look at this. This is glorious. We're gonna go right over the top. Let that steam just a little bit, get the heat up, and then we're gonna cover it. Before we do that, let's talk about shredding some cheese. Got a shredder. We're gonna take some of that Parmesan cheese. This is gonna go on our fries later, so we're just gonna give a nice, fine little shred, just like that. And now let's check out these mussels real quick. Some of them are starting to open already because that steam is hitting them. Uh, I've got some wine here, CJ. Today I'm using uh, Pinot Grigio. Uh, Cupcake is really fantastic. I actually really like this brand. It's a really great, affordable white wine. Uh, we're going to add this over the top, and this is what's going to create our broth. So we're going to add about a half a cup to a cup, just like that. That's going to mix with the garlic and all those other flavors. Now I have my XL Basing Dome. This XL Basing Dome is unbelievable, and it actually fits perfectly over the aluminum pan. We're gonna let that steam for about five or six minutes. And biggity bang, buddy. So we're good to go. Uh, time for a two and two? We can't keep using the same old shows. Two and two. And two and two, we're right back. And we're back. Let's talk about French fries, because they are crisp and delicious. The thing I love most about this air fryer is truly how quick it goes. I'm gonna dump these into our bowl. And I'm gonna hit this with just a touch of our all-purpose. CJ, I know you eat the steakhouse like it's going out of style. What are your thoughts on the all-purpose? Oh yeah, uh, that's it's... what got me started actually, with all-purpose. CJ, you have a problem. No. We're also gonna throw our Parmesan. Now we wanna do this right when it comes out because it's hot and that Parmesan will start to melt onto those fries. So we'll let that sit for just a second. Let's talk about steamed mussels, man. Okay. Here we go. Seven minutes or so. These look absolutely fantastic. Can you? Oh, I can smell it. Holy cow. That is quite robust. It stings the nostrils. Look at these beautiful, gorgeous little babies. Oh my goodness. Let me take, a, let me take my scraper here. We're just gonna get this a stir. Get some of that butter, some of those beautiful leeks that have been sitting in that stunning sauce. Dude, I know you don't like seafood, but don't tell me that doesn't smell great. It smells okay. You are nuts! I've had also, better. I've had better. Check this out, over here. So you know we had that little bouquet garni. This is our flavor. That Parmesan rind has started to melt just a bit. Can you see a bubbling Oh in yeah, it? I got so it. So this is yep. flavored the broth. So we talk a lot about, come on, let, let, let's have a moment, CJ. Not, a, not again. No, God, please, no! So we talk about on Cook, Eat, Repeat. I love that you guys are here. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button down below. Click the bell icon, that way you get an email every time we post a video. Uh, every time you cook, it should be a learning experience. Every time you eat, you should be learning something new about your specific flavor preferences and the things that you love about food. That way, the next time you cook, the next time you repeat it, you're able to modify, adjust, on the fly to make stuff taste exactly the way that you want to do it because just because I like it one way doesn't mean you're gonna like it that way and it doesn't mean that CJ, well CJ's super picky. You're basically like an eight year old little girl. I hope you choke on your drink. In the nicest way possible. <laughs> if what I'm saying is if you wanna take your flavor game to the next level. No, I don't care what you're saying. <laughs> I don't care what Starting, you're saying. You don't eat seafood. So let's bring our plating dish. I like using these. Uh, it's kind of like a little casserole type action. Have you seen these? Oh yeah. See these on our website? These are our silicone heat gloves and they're pretty, pretty amazing. Especially <laughs> if you're moving your griddle top, like you need something sturdy. And this little aluminum pan is quite hot. <laughs> We're going to take, oh yeah, we're gonna pour. Ethan, can you see this if I pour it this way? Yep. Oh, look at that broth. Come on, CJ, that's gotta make you a little bit happy. Nope. 
nuts. Oh, last one. So you're gonna pile that on. The broth is where it's at too, so you want to make sure you have that broth. Good. Stop it up just like that. Now we're gonna take our beautiful French fries. Now you can serve these on the side. I like serving them this way because then the little bit of seasoned cheese falls down into the broth. And those French fries get in there, soak up all that beautiful flavor. CJ, this does absolutely nothing for you. Nothing. You're crazy! If someone served me this, I don't know if I'd want to leave their house. I feel like I was at Blackstone Betty's. Mm -hmm. Sunday fun day. I'm not going anywhere. Now we're gonna take some of that fresh parsley, give it a nice little garnish. Now as you let this sit, uh, that parsley will start to uh, kind of wilt into the heat. And that, I mean, I don't think it gets much better than that. I know, we, we can disagree, CJ. We will. That is my jam. Is that fresh Parmesan? Yep. Come on, man. Let me get one of these muscles. So, the trick, getting a good muscle, I'm gonna break that one side. So you've got your own delicious little spoon. There's that gorgeous little bit of leeks in there. You've got some broth in there, a little bit of garlic. Here we go. Mm. Part of me is glad that you don't eat seafood, CJ. <laughs> so you don't have to share? I am, I, I no, I'm not gonna share. No, no. Oh my goodness. The nice thing about leeks, I'm gonna get a little bit of parsley in there. So you see these little bits of leeks, that, that's, it's not caramelized, it's been like, macerating in that butter so it's absorbed all that garlic that butter flavor from the parmesan the mussels mm. oh yeah i get down plus this is a fun dish to get really messy yeah throw a party cook for a ton of people this is a really fun one if you like cj and you don't like seafood i don't know why you're still watching the video at this point but if you do because you're normal and you like deliciousness this is a really fun one. You guys can find uh, the recipe down below. You can find it at blackstoneproducts.com. Uh, I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. I'm Chef Nathan Lippy, your host, and I will see you guys in the next video where I make something else that CJ doesn't want to eat. Story of my life. <laughs>